Alrighty, in this video we are going to look at exporting a custom channel from NAD and the Vortisti in this case, which is very useful and it's the second version of the video just because in the first one I had made too many uh, screw-ups, you know, to make some mistakes which Marcus, the developer of NAD, was kind enough to um, fix for me, you know, to point me to it, uh, which I'm thank thanking for and uh, just said to make uh, another version because uh, it was uh, quite a lot. So then we're starting with the scene in which we did the conversion of the EMP to um, PRTs and you can do all this stuff in the simulation scene but I just want to show you that uh, doing it in the, uh, since it's just data operation, doing it in the uh, separate scene is also possible and gives you some flexibility like uh, you can add stuff afterwards, you know, after your simulation, uh, kind of an afterthought. Maybe the compositor asks for something that you didn't uh, think of before or you just had another idea after the simulation. It's very cool that you can do this data stuff after actually simulating. So, uh, let's just look into the stuff first. So, uh, we have the bodies here on the connections and I think I mentioned in the first video that you know, bodies are your big containers uh, in that, and then uh, you have uh, different shapes inside the bodies, which are, you know, again, like smaller containers, and the shapes contain the channels, which are the, uh, like, uh, individual data pieces on each particle or on each voxel and so on. So, the, uh, this is um, this body, the ten volume, it, it is the one that is holding actually the our geometry, and this body, the um, particle one, uh, is the one that is holding our uh, particle stuff. So you can see that um, in the particle body we have the uh, field shape, which is holding all the data from our volumetric um, uh, simulations. So you see here we have velocity uh, and so on. Uh, these things are just uh, you know, data on the voxels uh, from all the tiles that the simulation was done into. And we also have the particle shape, which is holding all the particles that get moved to the grid. So eventually, when we write out the uh, PRTs, we write out the particle shape. And uh, you saw before that we had the channels in there and we had the position and the velocity, uh, the droplet we're gonna uh, dot the droplet we also looked at, uh, how to use this one. So, to make a, to make a channel um, that is going to be sent on the particles, first it needs to be written on fields, just because all our simulation data really resides on the fields. Um, the particles contain uh, here in your position of velocity droplet that are kind of result of the simulation from particles being, being dragged uh, inside the fields, but the principal place where uh, stuff is happening really is the field. Uh, here. So let's um, add our custom channel to the field and that's going to be with the field nil channel. So I'm just going to add it there. And the field nil channel um, asks us for a name of the channel. So this team and asks us for the type of the channel and it's going to be a vector and we're going to use an um, expression which is curl function of the velocity. Now you can see that... Okay. I need to uh, uh, write dot velocity obviously because the field nail channel uh, is using the field context which means that it takes the field shape and is gonna um, I presume that um, I'm operating on the field shape here. So just saying dot velocity equals to field dot velocity. Now the way this thing gets computed is with this curl function. And if I open up Wikipedia, you can see that um, there is a really nice explanation um, that in vector calculus, uh, vector variation that describes the infinite is really small, which means like a delta change. Uh, rotation of uh, three-dimensional vector field and it says um, if the vector field represents uh, the flow velocity of a moving fluid then the curl is the circulation density of the fluid. Uh, it is pretty much, as Marcus explained to me, is the angular, um, is the vector of an angular velocity. Um, I think this expression is also pretty cool. 
So just because this thing is a vector, then uh, I need to put this expression in all the three um, slots here. Uh, so I'm going to get um, this vector operation done for each of the three axes. Um, and um, pretty much I'm going to get the vector operation and I'm going to get the result of the vector operation on each axis, get written down uh, here. And then after I get the general written down, down in the field, which I'm going to get a terminal, um, just because I don't want to override my PMPs yet. So I'm going to get the terminal and I'm going to uh, connect that. So let's see. I have an L channel, a field channel, and then I just want to uh, get that uh, information from the field and also put it on the particles just because the particles are going to be the stuff that you're going to be writing down on the PRT. So uh, fortunately there is a particle, particle nail channel. So I connect the body. And in the particle nail channel, I just need to specify that I want to have a vector type channel and I want to call it electricity. And for the expression, I need to, um, to get, uh, to sample the value from the field for each of the three axes. So it's going to be um, field dot vorticity. Now you see that in this case, I need to write field dot vorticity just because um, it, we are in um, here. Uh, we are in a different context, so I need to uh, specify the field. So I'm going to write here zero, just because zero. Um, this kind of you know is an array. Uh, this thing in the square brackets addresses the uh, the x, the first uh, value, the x value. Then this, the uh, index one addresses the y value, and index two addresses the z value. like this. So if I now reset my graph, I just step through. F6, let's see what's going to happen. You can just stop and I can go down here and I can look at the, sh at the particle shape and you can see that I have already a vorticity channel here and I have some data uh, on each of its axes, which is cool. So when this thing is working, I can just disconnect from here and connect it to the body right and actually I'm gonna connect my particle scope so I'm actually seeing what happens at the end so let's reset let's look and the stuff is moving through and this time it's writing uh, in the PRTs and the cool thing is in, that in the particle scope I can Use except the you know standard shader, I can actually use the channel color. color. So with this one, I can go to the out here and I can say which channel do I want to see, and I want to see the electricity channel. So you can see that I already have um, three components: red, green, and blue of that electricity channel uh, displayed here, which is cool. Now I can. Um, check out how my stuff looks, you know, I can obviously see that uh, I have the vectors getting uh, written down, which is good. Just gonna wait a bit for the thing to calculate. To write down all the stuff into impurities. You know, I'm gonna go into max. Yeah, it's from the like a teaser from uh, the next video. <laughs> so I want to open. The lost color. This is the style that we did before. Let's see. That's pretty much done. So I'm just gonna do that for uh, see what happens here. 
lost these, and so on. I think we have stuff like assign materials here. Let's clear that up. And I now have the blue shader that I was having before. Okay. So now um, if I open the data viewer and update, not going to be really seeing all the channels. Um, but if I remove from here, let's just add again the whole thing. Look at the data viewer. Now in the data viewer, you can see that I have now another channel which is called vorticity around here, and you see that it's a vector channel, and just like the velocity, uh, since it's a vector. I can simply replace. So, this thing. So, uh, I replaced it, and you can see I have now a different result here. I can actually increase this, see, because I have too much of the bright stuff. You see. Okay, and uh, now this is our vorticity. So you see, um, it is uh, giving you another option of uh, coloring your stuff. It's especially useful for foam. So when you do your Kakatoa actually renderings, you can um, uh, drive the, the density with this. So let's actually try this. I'm gonna uh, switch to Kakatoa. And I'm just going to put in some lights because I think is there any? There isn't any. So I'm just going to put in some lights uh, so we can see our crypto. Sorry. And uh, all right. So what I want to do is that uh, for my uh, foam, like for one of my foam passes, I want to have more foam when I have more vorticity and less foam when I have less. So I'm just going to add another magma. And here, again, I'm going to get the vorticity as an input. And I'm going to get an output, which is going to be best this time. So, I can see from here, actually, uh, like the maximum speed, I'm going to start by simply copying this stuff. Okay, so uh, this is the previous setup. My speed and stuff is alright, and here the clamp here, which is also cool. Um, I don't need the blend, but I think which would be good here would be the curve. So the curve is uh, pretty much a remapping thing. So uh, it is gonna take your input values here on the x-axis and your output values are, and it's going to produce output values that are going to be here on the y-axis, which means that uh, I can use that curve to uh, create a bit of a function, you know, to paint in the function from the, um, from the, uh, like the, the way the one thing gets transferred to, to the other thing. So let's say if I want to make it more contrasty, I can just do this. So now I'm going to get just a little color on low places, maybe get a lot of color on the higher places. Kind of a, you know, traditional S curve. Um, that you, that you've seen in Photoshop or anything. Pretty much it's a contrast increasing curve. 
Okay, so if I update now, uh, actually, yeah, uh, this is just affecting the density, not the color. I can make it affect both things, actually. Mm. Which is a cool thing about Magma 2. Let's look down there. Yeah, let's just create another output here. So it's going to be the density. Very cool thing about uh, Magma 2, you can use um, one thing to one, uh, just one um, Magma uh, modifier and uh, have a lot of outputs. So we don't, we want to run into to kind of explicitly do stuff to connect the viewport color to the density or anything. So I'm just going to get that curve connected to that clump and out to density. So actually, yeah, to be able to see the effect of the curve, I'm going to connect it to the blend also. Automatic layout. Let's do it. Shift Control R accepts the automatic results as the as menu. Okay, this is nice. So if I close here, you can see I'm gonna uh, have this thing change a bit. You see I have like the increased contrast. So uh, brighter parts parts are brighter and the dark parts are darker. Uh, if I now render Second. Uh, so if I render, you're going to be able to see that here the darker parts are much, you know, less dense than the brighter parts, which have more vorticity. And obviously this is really cool. And you can drive this with the, uh, with the, um, actually, oh, yeah, let's run again. I still had the last one on the top. And you can drive this with the curve in a pretty uh, specific and precise way. That's been much I think. In a pretty precise way. So you can see um, for foam, at the place that you have a lot of churning, you're going to have a lot of like high density. In places that you have, don't have much churning, you're going to have low density. So you can get this um, much more you know, reasonable result because I really hate when there is this big like crypto dot lines, uh, too obvious, you know, not too foamy. And this thing can give you much more of a formal look. And you have to keep in mind that this whole thing gets multiplied by the main density control control, which is this one here. So if I drop this thing to like minus two, I'm gonna get ten times less density, despite the expression that I have there already. So that expression, that like result from the modifier is gonna get multiply the distance at the end and it's going to give me this. You see uh, these guys pretty much disappeared completely, almost. Yeah, really very good there. So um, that's a way to do it, not just with Vorticity, with any channel from NIAD. Uh, you can see uh, whatever channel you make, it shows up in the data viewer, shows up here and you can just put it in and do stuff with your nice um, uh, magma flows. And yeah, that's really useful. So yeah, cheers.